Here is a specimen of the larynx. What we see over here is the thyroid ala, cricothyroid membrane, cricoid cartilage, and here is the epiglottis. So if we are doing a percutaneous injection laryngoplasty, then we have three routes which we can use. One could be through the cricothyroid membrane, one through the thyroid cartilage, and one through the thyrohyoid. So I typically like to first try the transthyroid technique for which I take this 20 or 21 number needle, which is a thick gauge needle. The idea is when you're going through the thyroid cartilage, if the injection needle is very thin, then the cartilage pieces may actually block it. So here we have a 21 gauge needle. What we do for a left injection laryngoplasty is going from the midline about five to six millimeters in a male, three to four millimeters in a female, and from the lower border, three millimeters above. And at that point, we have this boring action so that we go through both the lamellae of the thyroid cartilage while the flexible laryngoscope is in. And we are looking for a tenting, which should happen of the paraglottic space and then of the vocal fold. The other method one can use is the cricothyroid method where you can bend the needle by 15 to 30 degrees and go in the midline in the cricothyroid hugging the lower border of the thyroid cartilage and 30 degrees upward and laterally to the side which you want to inject. Here one would be injecting the infraglottic side of the vocal fold and then if we are trying to do a thyrohyoid injection we can even have a double bend to a needle of course then your needle tip would be maybe a 26 number and you're going through the thyroid thy, thyrohyoid membrane through the petiole of the epiglottis in a downward direction and you're going to be injecting onto the supraglottic surface through the supraglottic surface into the paraglottic space so here, since you're piercing the petiole of the epiglottis, you may get a little bleeding and you will be seeing the needle tip. And uh, it's easier to see the needle tip in the thyrohyoid technique. It's most difficult to see the needle tip when you're doing the cricothyroid route. So you have to be close to the vocal folds. And of course, in the transthyroid technique, you're not going to see the needle tip. You don't want to, you just want to see that tenting. So for the first few injection laryngoplasty cases which you may be doing, it may be preferable to make surface markings on the patient's neck so that you're exactly comfortable with where you should have the needle in being inserted while doing the percutaneous injection laryngoplasty. So here we have our patient with the neck in a position of extension. The patient is sitting on a chair and we are going to do the surface markings over here. I can palpate the thyroid notch over here. Now I palpate the lower border of the thyroid cartilage which is over here and then I am palpating for the cricoid. This is the upper border of the cricoid cartilage and not that we need it but here is the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. So this is the cricothyroid membrane over here and this over here is our midline. So if we are doing a left injection laryngoplasty then we are going from the midline of the two thyroid alley about six to seven millimeters in a male and three millimeters from the lower border. So of course you can measure it if you want but this would be the position. In a female you want, may want to go four to five millimeters from the midline and once again same three millimeters from the lower border and the injection of the needle would be 90 degrees to the surface in a boring action as such and that is going to happen after the 2% lidocaine with adrenaline injection has already taken place and the patient has been adequate, adequately nebulized with the lignocaine. This is how we keep our little trolley ready before doing the injection laryngoplasty. What we have here in the syringe is 2% lidocaine with adrenaline, which will be used for the local infiltration in the neck at the point of injection. Then we have the 4% lidocaine, 
and we take equal amount of lidocaine and air so that when we push it through the side channel of the laryngoscope it can go in as a laryngeal wash for the patient of course we must keep in mind that the maximum amount of lidocaine which should be used is 5 mg per kg body weight so if you're using a uh, 4% lignocaine without adrenaline the maximum you should use would be about 6 to 7 because you don't want to cause toxicity and over here we have our various injections 21 number 22 number these are the two needles which are typically used when you are doing a transthyroid they're a little thicker so you can bore through the thyroid lamella without the ossific without the cartilage sort of blocking the needle and if you're doing a cricothyroid you can use a 24 or even a 26 number similarly for thyrohyoid injection and then these needles are of course attached to whatever filler you are using when you are doing the procedure. So once we have decongested the nostrils, put some lidocaine in the nostril and in the oral cavity, given lidocaine uh, nebulization and the patient has been nicely anesthetized as far as the larynx is concerned and then we have injected that 2% lignocaine with adrenaline into the skin, we are ready now to perform our flexible laryngoscopy. And ideally you can use a flexible laryngoscope which has got a side channel through which you can drip a few drops of lidocaine during the procedure also. This is a patient who has a right mobile vocal fold and a left paretic vocal fold. We are going to be performing a percutaneous transthyroid injection laryngoplasty. The first thing we do is apply pressure on the cricothyroid membrane externally and you can view the movement of this cricothyroid membrane with the endoscopic view. This gives us an idea as to where to insert the needle in comparison with this motion of the cricothyroid membrane. As the needle is inserted, one would see a blanching or a tenting of the mucosa where the needle is going to just pierce through. As you see right now, a white dot of blanching underneath the left focal fold and as this is a little bit too low as compared to the undersurface of a vocal fold we direct the needle slightly in an upward direction and this is still the transthyroid root being applied not the cricothyroid approach so as we move the needle upward we also see the blanching which is again falling slightly short of the infraglottic surface of the vocal fold we also want the insertion more posteriorly therefore we move the needle a bit above and posteriorly and now you see the movement exactly where we want it on the left vocal fold infraglottic edge so when we have the needle exactly in position, we start injecting the uh, material, which is hyaluronic acid in this case. We see the ballooning of the vocal fold because of the injection in the paraglottic space. We ask the patient to phonate and we always tend to over inject in these patients. As we know, these are temporary materials.